what is going on everybody and welcome back to another China phone first look and unboxing video and today we have here the Blue Boo X Touch. So well I'm really excited because so many products arrived in the last time Honor 7, Yumi IM Pro, um, Sony Xperia Z5 Compact, well a lot of stuff so stay tuned for a lot of more. Well this one here is from eFogShop.com as always there's a link down below in the description so make sure you check it out for the latest and cheapest price. And now let's get started and let's have a closer look at the specs of the Blue Boo X Touch the annual flagship. Righty right guys so I can't hear the word annual flagship anymore because well um, there are too many phones which were called annual flagship and the specs were actually crappy but I have to say um, here for the price it's 160 euro keep in mind for 160 euro you won't get a real flagship but you can get here some really decent design and nice looking specs so um, it's running the MTK6753 octa-core system on chip mid-range low budget but does a pretty good job 3 gigabytes of RAM supporting the chipset, that's very good, and 32 gigabytes of ROM. So it's now increasing from 16 slowly to 32, also in the cheaper segment. Something really nice to see. Android 5.1 straight out of the box, combined with a 5.0 full HD resolution IPS OGS display. Yeah, um, I've seen it already and it looks very good. A 3050 milliamp hours battery. Then we have a 13 megapixel rear camera, five mega, uh, sorry, 8 megapixels um, front facing camera, probably 5 and interpolated not really sure right now and the sensor of the rear camera is the Sony IMX 214 which we had in the OnePlus One and the OnePlus One actually had pretty decent picture quality for me so I hope to see it here in the Blue Blue X Touch too. The rest is basically the same you can find on every other Android phone nothing special here and it's dual SIM and yeah micro plus micro SIM and supports 64 gigabyte TF cards. Alright so there we go now let's open up the box and let's see what we can find inside. So the box actually looks really nice annual flagship so yeah, I'm pretty excited. Blue Boo, Beyond Your Life, nice slogan actually. And there we go, let's open up the box. Oh, that fits really tight. And in there we have the smartphone in some kind of protection sleeve. And oh, holy crap, this is some really premium feeling here right now. This has some kind of curved back cover and 3D mirror back craft. So, oh, really nice quality and also feels really good in my hands at the first look at least. But let's put it beside right now. Let's have a closer look at the things we can find here inside of the box. And yeah, some cardboard material. All right, first of all, we have here the quick starter guide. And yeah, um, so far as I can see, it's colored and it is English only. All right, but well, colored pictures, that's always pretty good. Then here we have the metal pin to open up the SIM card tray. Um, as always, it's a dual SIM phone and those slim phones, yeah, you need to have such kind of metal pin. All right, and here we have some sub boxes, so let's get them out of the big box. Guess what? In there, that's probably the charger. And um, I hope it supports quick charging because quick charging is really a feature which a device should have which calls itself the annual flagship. And here's the charger. Oh yeah, okay, the output, if you check this out, it's 5 volts and 1.5 amps. So it's a bit better than the 5 volt chargers, but not really fast, I guess. So I really have to measure the charging time in the full review. Um, so far, it will charge a little bit faster than the 5 volt chargers, probably. Otherwise, it wouldn't come with a 1.5 amp charger. But I'm not really sure if it's really fast or not. Okay, and so just the basic accessories. In there, we have a micro USB cable and no USB Type-C, so also no step in the future, just a very cheap micro USB cable. All right, this is what you can find inside of the box, the phone, quick starter guides, the SIM remover tool, and the charging accessories. All right, guys, so here's the Blue Boo X Touch, and the first feeling here in my hands, as I've told you before, it feels pretty premium. So the frame here feels like a little bit on my S6 Edge, maybe a little bit thicker, but really nice quality. Probably the feeling is just because of the 3D back cover, so this is actually just a curved back cover, you can't remove it. And yeah, um, I'm not really sure, it looks like glass, but actually it feels a lot like plastic. So it, it looks and feels like some plastic back cover. Now, non-removable, so we have the SIM card slot here on the right side. I will show you that just a little bit later. But the overall quality of the frame, I think it's very good. The back cover, well, feels a bit cheap though. And the front side here also feels quite okay to me. So let's get started here with the display. It's full HD resolution and you can see it on the icons so they are really sharp and also colors and viewing angles I have to say they look really good here on the Blue Boo X Touch nothing to say about that at the bottom we have um, yeah a capacitive touch buttons on the right side we have the back button on the left side we have the menu button 
in the middle we have the mechanical home button with fingerprint scanner. Well, um, they have backlight, but on my model, I'm not really sure if you can see it, the right backlight is stronger than on the left one. I'm not really sure if that is because of some kind of notifications, because it has an Harlequin LED um, inside, so at least in the software, I guess that's for um, yeah, the capacitive touch buttons here, or if it's just because, well, maybe um, the backlight is just crappy and it's um, just stronger here on the right one. Now at the top we have the, the front-facing camera. It should be 8 megapixels, but I guess it's maybe less and interpolated. Here we have light and proximity sensor, and in the middle we have the really big speaker. And there's a black bar around the display, but not really much. So if I open up here on bright application, you can see the black bar is just at the top two to three millimeters on the outer borders it's like two millimeters so almost not noticeable okay then um, the buttons they are placed on the right side of the device so they're also made out of metal and they feel really good they're not sliding around not up and down pretty stiff and yeah also here volume button which is a single button here at the top of the device now here at the bottom you can see the USB port and well it's micro USB so there was also one micro USB cable included and um, it looks like a dual speaker design but nope um, yeah the sound I did hear it when I booted up for the first time and it sounds really crappy so regarding the speakers I think they do not sound really good so actually it's just a single one placed here in the right speaker grid here we have a hole for the microphone and that's it here at the bottom but I really like that it's curved so it looks it looks like the opposite of my Galaxy S6 Edge actually a really cool design in my opinion. Now here at the top of the device we have the 3.5mm headphone jack placed here on the left side of the frame and yeah that's it nothing here at the top no AR blaster not anything. Then we can have a look here at the back cover. As I've told you um, it feels a little bit like plastic so actually if I just hit it yeah I, I definitely think it's plastic. Coming here with the blue boo logo at the top we have the dual LED flash it's just a normal one but dual um, not dual tone and here we have the rear camera. It should have a Sony IMX214 sensor. Not really sure, it's, it's actually a good sensor, but let's see how the software optimization of the lens actually is. Okay, then let's talk about the SIM card tray. So you get a metal pin in order to remove it, but actually that's not needed. Now I'm not really sure if this is actually meant to be, but I can just slide it out here with, with my nails. Because, um, yeah, it's not really plain with the back cover, so actually there's a little bit of an edge, and I can just use here, for instance, my nails to slide out here the SIM card tray. What's really nice about the SIM card tray, let's zoom in here a little bit, is that it actually supports two SIM cards, so two micro SIM cards, plus one TF card at the same time. So you could use the dual SIM feature and the 64 gigabyte memory expansion. And this is a very nice thing. So here you can see how the slot looks from the inside, actually nothing special, and that's basically it. So now we had a look at the Bluebue X-Touch from the outside. So, so far so good, but the backlight here and the capacitive touch buttons, this is really something I have to look into it because it's not looking so nice right now. Now here's a little correction regarding the notification LED. I just found out there is one, so not the buttons at the bottom, the backlight of them is just crappy. At the top here we have a little notification LED, it's just near to the sensor and it's multi colored. I can show you it here with the light manager for instance yeah let's try it here in green. Um, to test we have to switch off the display and there we go as you can see it lights up here just right above the sensor. So it's really hard to see um, if it's not on and so far it also did not light up when my phone was charging so that was the really strange thing but here in the light manager it's fully working and the cool thing is it's also multicolor. All right guys so we're now here in Android 5.1 on the Blue Blue X Touch and so far this feels here pretty smooth while well, it runs an octa 3 gigabytes of RAM that's really good and yeah it's a little bit customized to just the icons but not really a lot and we can first of all go to the settings to check out here all the features and I would say let's get started here with about the phone here we can see Android 5.1 this is definitely lollipop at the top we have wireless update and there is already a wireless update so always has the same fix some bugs and optimize some functions of the system don't worry so um, before I do the review I will definitely update to the latest software pretty good that you actually already get Otis. At the top we have Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi seems to be very good. I'm already in my new office and um, for instance on the Cubot X16 I just find one network. On my OnePlus 2 it's better but still not as good like here on the Blue Blue X Touch. And yeah this looks very good so far. It also comes with Bluetooth, it comes with Hotknot. So basically Hotknot is similar to NFC. It allows data exchange when the screen touches another device. But well it only works between other MTK devices which also support Hotknot. So 
so not so special. And yeah, that's everything we can find here on the more. Um, we have here display, so mirror vision is here also inside, and sensor recalibration. This is something I really like because, you know, sometimes um, there could be something wrong with the values of the proximity sensor, and then you can recalibrate it in here, and S view cover settings. But I have um, no cover here for um, the phone itself, so I can't really tell you anything about it. Regarding the storage, well, 32 gigabytes. Straight out of the box, you have 26 gigabytes usable space. You know, it's always less and available right now, 25.5 gigabytes. So I would say this is really enough and you still have the opportunity to use two SIM cards and one micro SD card. This is absolutely great. We have the Harlequin LED notification. You've seen before, it's at the top, a little bit above the proximity sensor. And we have here um, different colors, so red, green, blue, yellow, cyan, white, and violet. So you see, that's really cool. Um, that's also multicolor. We have for sure gestures inside. So um, you could use the proximity sensor to swipe over it, for instance, to control the gallery or whatever. Actually, I'm not using that at all. Regarding the battery, can't tell you anything right now, just can tell you that it charges like any other phone and the charging rate is not so special and no really quick charging, but let's see how the battery lifetime is when um, I will bring you the full review in a couple of days. Regarding the fingerprint scanner, I already registered two fingerprints and I have to say it's really accurate and really good. I can show you that, so the screen lock is now on fingerprint lock and there we go. So please slide to unlock, it doesn't work so I have to put in the code, I'll just put my finger on there. Okay, actually, I think I have to go back. Well, let me try it again. You know, always fail if you do it for the first time, but you can see now it works really good. So um, if I put my finger on there, there are two fingerprints registered and you can register up to five fingerprints as on the most China phones. And I would also recommend to register your fingerprint more often. I don't like those fingerprint sensors so much which are in the home button because sometimes I don't put my fingers on there. And right now my fingers are really sweaty because yeah, it's cold here a little bit and I'm a bit nervous because of talking in front of you. And um, yeah, sometimes it doesn't get recognized, but for sure if the fingers are dry, and then you shouldn't have a problem at all. So the fingerprint scanner works really good, but make sure you register your fingerprint at least two times. It also supports off-screen gestures, so double tap to wake up, swipe up, all the things you can see in here. Actually, I'm just using double tap to wake up. It comes with GPS as always. We have here language and input, so different languages. Um, you see it's multi-language, not the full Android language pack. Some things are missing, but the most important stuff, so far as I can see, is in there. All right, so this is basically everything we can find in the settings. The rest is just like on every other Android phone. Then now let's go back here to the launcher. Yeah, the launcher also very basic. We can just have a quick look here at the menu to see what is pre-installed. Maybe have a quick look here at the camera. And so far, um, it looks already very sharp in preview. So the Sony IMX 214 is really not a bad sensor. You can find them in a lot of 2014 flagships. And for a cheap China phone like this one here, actually, um, if the optimization is also really Really good then yeah um, it's definitely a win now the picture size here is maximum 60 megapixels but the native resolution of the sensor for sure it's 13 and they said it comes with optical image stabilization but as you can see here in the settings there is not even EIS so this was just a marketing lie or however you want to call it but there is no optical image stabilization this is something I can tell you for sure okay we can just have a quick look at the front-facing camera here in preview well, regarding the light, it looks really okay. Damn, I look destroyed. But yeah, um, you will see the full quality anyway in the review coming in the next days. Comes with all the Google Apps pre-installed, so you really don't have to worry about that. Sim Toolkit APK and with Xander integrated. You know, Xander, it's some kind of, you can transfer data or Wi-Fi or whatever. Um, actually, I'm not using that at all, but you can Google it if you want to. Now, I also did some benchmarks, so I can quickly show you them. In Antutu, this little baby scores around, oh, sorry, it scores around 41K. And well, this is with 64 bits not activated. I will now do a quick benchmark with 64 bits so you can see the difference. All right, now with 64 bit support enabled, I could even score 43,000 points. So that's really good without 42 or 40. And we can go back here. So that was actually 32 bits only. If we have a look at the info, you can see it runs Android 5.1 with 64 bit support. Full HD resolution display. Well, the camera's interpolated to 60 megapixels from 13. We have here 2.92 um, gigabytes of RAM, 
Here the MTK6753 chipset, so it's an 8-core SoC um, clocks from 300 megahertz up to 1.3 gigahertz. And yeah, here the rest. So um, if we check out the ranking, then um, 43K is actually very good. That's like 70%, 75% of the performance of a Galaxy Note 4. Then I can also show you the Geekbench 3 result. Oh well, I probably have to rerun that because it's not cached anymore. But first of all, let's have a look here at CPU-C. You can see um, here the chipset once again. So this is definitely the um, MTK6735, sorry, 53. So CPU-C shows it here wrong. Um, it's an 8-core, 1.3 gigahertz. Here um, you can see the storage again. Um, there is no root access, so this phone does not come pre-rooted. Regarding the battery, can't really tell you anything about that. Now, yeah, um, the device absolutely does not get hot. Using it now for some time, and even here after the benchmarks, the maximum temperature here is 35 degrees. All right, regarding the sensors, it just comes with the basic sensors, but at least with a magnetometer, but it shows really high values actually right now. So um, let's go here to sensor box, and here you will see that comes with an accelerometer, light sensor, orientation sensor, proximity sensor, sound sensor, and here the magnetic field sensor, but not really sure. Actually, there shouldn't be such a high value here, <laughs> over 200 micro Tesla. It's very strange. So I will have to check this out um, if it's if it's a problem with the sensor or if something here is influencing it. All right, there is no gyroscope. So actually, they have advertised it with a gyroscope. And for people who want to use this phone for VR, sorry, I have to disappoint you. The gyroscope is not working. Not really sure if it's in there, but just the software is right now crappy. But I guess um, this was just the wrong feature and it's not actually in the smartphone. Okay, I will just quickly rerun here the Geekbench 3 test and show you the result. Well, now also the score here in Geekbench 3 looks good. 600 17 single core, 2665 multi core. Well, my battery is almost empty, but um, should be enough for the benchmark. So, looks quite good so far regarding the performance. Also, the phone here feels absolutely smooth. Just the sound of the speaker is really crappy. The cameras, they look also good, but well, there's no gyroscope inside. And um, regarding the optical image stabilization, at least what they advertised, yeah, that um, looks like a fake feature. All right, but all in all, um, the phone is looking very nice here. The first look I really like the pattern because it always changes the color the design very nice the specs are good so definitely nice specs for the price in my full review I want to cover um, the camera performance the antenna design but so far Wi-Fi very nice so Wi-Fi um, is very good then also battery lifetime charging speeds yeah and also be focused on the camera so what they have done with the IMX 214 all right, review coming in four to five days. Stay tuned. And um, once again, thanks so much for watching. Check out the link down below in the description to eFuckShop.com. They usually have it for a very good price. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a nice day and bye-bye. See ya.